What is her go to never fail joke? I went to the doctor's recently. He said, don't eat anything fatty. I said, what, like bacon and burgers? He said, no fatty, don't eat anything. A woman is walking home with her three daughters Rose, Lily, and Cinderblock. Rose asks her mother, Mom, why did you name me Rose? To which her mother replies, Well, sweetie, when we were coming home from the hospital with you a rose fell on your head. Lily, curious now, asks her mother, Mom, why did you name me after a flower too? To which her mother replies, Well, sweetie, when we were coming home from the hospital with you a lily fell on your head. Cinderblock says to her mother, HGHGHDNBGH. DNBGH. No, no, no. You have it the wrong way round. Don't reveal their names straight away. It's a much more unexpected punchline. It should be more like, a woman is walking home with her three daughters. The eldest daughter turns to her and asks, Mommy, how did I get my name? Well, sweetie, when we were bringing you home from the hospital, a rose petal landed on your head. So that's why we named you Rose. The second daughter, now curious, asks the same question. Well, darling, when we were bringing you home from the hospital, a lily petal landed on your head. So that's why we named you Lily. The third girl asks HHGHGNGHGHNG. DDDNBHGHBHNGHHH. Do an exaggerated impression. Shoo, quiet now, Cinderblock. Two altar boys are fishing on a dock. One of the boys gets a bite and struggles to reel him in. When he finally gets the best of the fish, he snatches him up and proclaims to the other altar boy, Look at this big sum bee. The other altar boy says, You can't say that, you're an altar boy, to which he explains, That's the name of the fish, sum bee. Wow, well that is a big sum bee, let's go show it to the priest. The two boys run up to the priest yelling, Priest, look at this big sum bee we caught. The priest says, You boys can't talk like that, you're altar boys. The altar boys explain, Priest, that's the name of the fish, sum bee. The priest replies, well that is a nice sumbi, let's go catch some more of those sum BS and show them to the cardinal. So the priest and the boys catch some more of those sum BS and carry them to show the cardinal. Cardinal, look at all these sum BS we caught. The cardinal says, I should have you all excommunicated for language like that. The altar boys explain, well, that's the name of the fish, sum B. The cardinal replies, I never in my life have seen such a fine bunch of sum BS, let's take them to the nun and see if she'll cook up these sum BS. So the altar boys, the priest, and the cardinal go see the nun. Nun, can you cook up these some BS for us? The nun replies, I ain't cooking nothing if you boys are gonna talk like that. The altar boys explain, nun, that's the name of the fish, some bee. The nun replies, well, since you boys went through the trouble of catching all these some BS, I reckon I could fry these some BS up. That night, the Pope is visiting town and sits down for supper with the altar boys, priest, cardinal, and nun. The altar boys say, I can't believe we caught all these some BS. The priest says, these are the best some BS I have ever eaten. The cardinal says, nun, you cooked these some BS just right. The nun replies, I sure did, you boys gotta catch some more of these some BS. The Pope looks around at everyone with a surprised look on his face. He cracks a grin and says, y'all mother affairs are all right. A woman is sitting at her recently deceased husband's funeral. A man leans into her and asks, do you mind if I say a word? No, go right ahead, the woman replies. The man stands, clears his throat, says plethora, and sits back down. Thanks, the woman says, that means a lot. Well, men are on opposite sides of a river. The first man shouts to the second, how do I get to the other side of the river? The second man shouts back, you are on the other side of the river. A man decides to quit his job and run away to join a pirate crew. After spending a few hours at the dock, he sees a man who has a peg leg, a hook hand, and an eye patch. The man is obviously a pirate captain. The man promptly joins the captain's crew, and they ship out to sea that very day. Later that night, the man walks up to the captain and says, I'm sorry, but I just can't hold back anymore. How did you get your peg leg? The captain says, ARR, twas me first day at sea as a young lad. A great big swell came from the sea and knocked me overboard. Before me crew could pull me out, a giant one-eyed fish swam up and bit off me leg. The man goes that sounds terrible. What happened to your hand? The captain says ARR, twas me second day at sea. Another great big swell came from the sea and knocked me overboard. Before me crew could pull me up, the giant one-eyed fish swam up and bit off my hand. The man tells the captain it sounds like the fish has it out for him, and asks what happens to his eye. The captain says ARR, twas me third day at sea. I was looking up at the sky when a bird came and shat in me eye. 
The man says, and that's how you lost your eye. The captain responds, no, but twas me first day with the hook. A man went to Spain on his vacation. He stopped by a restaurant and saw an interesting dish. He asked the waiter about it, who said some los cojones del toro, the balls of the bull, sir. We serve it once a day after the bullfights. The man places an order for the next day, and leaves. When he comes back the next day and gets his dish, he looks at it for a minute and notices something is wrong. He calls the waiter over and says, excuse me, but why are these so much smaller than those from yesterday? The waiter pauses, looks around, and replies, I'm so sorry, sir, but sometimes the bull does win. A man on vacation with his family arrives at a hotel. As he's checking in, he says to the clerk, I'm on vacation with my family. Please make sure the prawn channel is disabled. The clerk replies in disgust, it's just regular prawn, you sick F. I slept with a blind woman the other night. It went pretty well, mostly. Once the clothes came off she said to me you have the biggest dick I have ever laid my hands on. I said you're pulling my leg. There are three old ladies sitting on a park bench. A man in a trench coat walks by and flashes them. Two of the old ladies have a stroke. The other one couldn't reach that far. A lady approaches her priest and tells him, Father, I have a problem. I have two female talking parrots, but they only know how to say one thing. What do they say? The priest inquired. They only know how to say, Hi, we're prostitutes. Wanna have some fun? That's terrible, the priest exclaimed, but I have a solution to your problem. Bring your two female parrots over to my house and I will put them with my two male talking parrots whom I taught to pray and read the Bible. My parrots will teach your parrots to stop saying that terrible phrase, and your female parrots will learn to praise and worship. Thank you, the woman responded. The next day the woman brings her female parrots to the priest's house. His two male parrots are holding rosary beads and praying in their cage. The lady puts her two female parrots in with the male parrots, and the female parrots say, Hi, we're prostitutes, wanna have some fun? One male parrot looks over at the other male parrot and exclaims, Put the beads away. Our prayers have been answered. A DEA officer stopped at a ranch and told the rancher, I need to inspect your ranch for illegally grown drugs. The rancher said, okay, but don't go in that field over there, as he pointed out the location. The DEA officer verbally exploded saying, Mister, I have the authority of the federal government with me. Reaching into his rear pants pocket, he removed his badge and probably displayed it to the rancher. See this badge? This badge means I'm allowed to go wherever I wish. On any land. No questions asked. Do you understand? The rancher nodded politely, apologized, and went about his chores. A short time later, the old rancher heard loud screams, looked up, and saw the DA officer running for his life, being chased by the rancher's big bull. With every step the bull was gaining ground on the officer, and it seemed likely that he'd sure enough get gored before he reached safety. The officer was clearly terrified. The rancher threw down his tools, ran to the fence and yelled at the top of his lungs. Your badge, show him your badge. An old Italian man lived alone in the country. It was spring and he wanted to dig his tomato garden, as he had done every year, but it was very hard work for the aging man as the ground was hard. His only son, Vincent, who used to help him, was currently in prison. The old man wrote a letter to his son and described his predicament. Dear Vincent, I am feeling pretty bad because it looks like I won't be able to plant my tomato garden this year. I'm just getting too old to be digging up a garden plot. If only you were here my troubles would be over. I know you would dig the plot for me. Love Dad. A few days later he received a letter from his son. Dear Dad, not for nothing, but don't dig up that garden. That's where I buried the bodies. Love Vinny. At 4 a.m. the next morning, FBI agents and local police arrived at the old man's house and dug up the entire area. However, they didn't find any bodies, so they apologized to the old man and left. That same day the old man received another letter from his son. Dear Dad, go ahead and plant the tomatoes now. That's the best I could do under the circumstances. Love Vinny. I collect vegetation data for grazing sustainability. One day I was out collecting data with my boss and the rancher stoked by to say, be careful in that field, the bull is in there. My boss is not worried about it so we continue collecting data. I grew up on a small dairy slash beef ranch and don't play that game. I bucked up and pretended it was all cool. We accidentally spooked the bull and it started pawing at the ground and I freaked. I ran to the nearest fence as fast as my punchy short legs could carry me and leapt over the fence. All the while my boss is still standing on the other side of the field, just calm as can be. The bull laid back down after a few minutes, and I walked back to my boss the long way round. So embarrassing. Dad is listening to his daughter say her prayers before bedtime.
She says, God bless mommy and God bless daddy and God bless grandma and goodbye grandpa. He asks her, why did you say that? I don't know. I just felt like saying it. The next day, grandpa drops dead. Wow, thinks dad, that's an odd coincidence. A month later at bedtime, the daughter says, God bless mommy and daddy. And goodbye grandma. Sure enough, the next day grandma breathes her last earthly breath. The dad realizes this is more than a coincidence, but he is not sure what to do. He doesn't want to disturb his wife by telling her, grandma and grandpa were her parents. Months go by and one night the man is listening to his daughter saying her prayers at bedtime, God bless mommy, she turns her head and looks straight at him and goodbye daddy. What? Are you sure honey? She nods. The man's heart begins racing and he breaks out in a sweat. He is so upset, he can't sleep at all that night. The next day he goes off to work, but locks himself in his office. He takes the phone off the hook, cancels all his meetings, and awaits the inevitable. He stays at work past 5 because he feels secure there. He watches the hours tick by. Finally it is midnight and, drenched in sweat, he realizes he has cheated death. He drives home drenched in sweat and with all his nerves frazzled. His wife is up and waiting for him, where the hell were you today? He replies, don't shout, I've had an absolutely miserable day. His wife then says, you had a miserable day. I'm the one who had a miserable day. First, the milkman drops dead on the steps. A man walks into a bar. He goes up to the bartender and asks him if he likes to gamble. The bartender says, sure, I'll take a bet. What's your action? The man offers a $50 bet that he can bite his own eyeball. The bartender, thinking it's easy money, accepts his bet and is shocked when a man removes his glass eye and bites down on it. Laughing, the man sees that the bartender is upset about losing his money, so he offers him a chance to win it back. Double or nothing says I can bite my other eye. The bartender thinks it over. He knows he was just tricked out of $50, but he also knows that this man can't possibly have two glass eyes, so he pulls another $50 from the register and accepts the man's bet. The man promptly takes out his false teeth and gently closes them around his other eye. Now the bartender is visibly angry to have been had for $100, and the man's laughter isn't helping. Just before he throws him out of his bar, the man puts his hand up. Real sorry about that, pal. I get people with that bit all the time, but you've been a good sport, so I'll give you another chance to win some cash. I've got $500 that says if you slide a shot glass down the bar top, I can run alongside of it and piss into the glass without missing a drop. This is kinda hard for me to do, though, so I think it's fair if you give me two chances at it. The bartender, eager to win his money back from the man, thinks to himself and realizes just how hard it would be for this man to piss into a shot glass while running at full speed. Especially knowing he only has one eye to line up a shot. After a minute of deliberation, he willingly accepts the bet. The man drops his pants to his ankles and when the bartender puts the shot glass down on the counter, shouts a resounding, go, prompting the bartender to slide it along the bar top. The man chases after it, holding his dick at an angle to properly aim it. However, pissing while running at full speed isn't easy, so he only manages to get a couple of drops in the glass by the time it reaches the other end. Catching his breath, the man reminds the bartender he has a second try, and that the first was simply to get his bearings straight. Once again, he shouts, go, giving the bartender his cue to send the shot glass back down the bar. Once again, the man chases wildly after it, spraying piss all over the bar top, stools, floor, and even hitting some of the bottles of liquor behind the bar. However, not one drop of urine found its way into the shot glass. Hand hanging low, he hands the bartender $500, to which the bartender gleefully accepted, jumping up and down in joy and cheering in victory at the cash he had just made. All of a sudden, a man in the back of the bar slams his fist hard against his table and screams F at the top of his lungs. The bartender mutters aloud, I wonder what his problem is. To which the man replies, Oh, I just bet that guy $10,000 that I could piss all over your bar and you'd be so happy about it you jumped up and down with joy. A Mexican man who spoke no English went into a department store to buy socks. He found his way to the menswear department where a young lady offered to help him. Quiero calcetines, said the man. I don't speak Spanish, but we have some very nice suits over here, said the sales girl. No, no quiero trajes. Quiero calcetines, said the man. Well, these shirts are on sale this week, declared the sales girl. No, no quiero camisas. Quiero calcetines, repeated the man. I still don't know what you're trying to say. We have some fine pants on this rack, offered the sales girl. No, no quiero pantalones. Quiero calcetines, insisted the man. 
These sweaters are top quality, the sales girl probed. No, no Kiero souvenir. Kiero calcetines, said the man. Our undershirts are over here, fumbled the sales girl, beginning to lose patience. No, no Kiero camisetas. Kiero calcetines, the man repeated. As they passed the underwear counter, the man spotted a display of socks and happily grabbed the pair. Holding them up he proclaimed S-O-C-K-E-S. Well, if you could spell it, why didn't you do that in the beginning? A vacationing penguin is driving his car through Arizona when he notices that the oil pressure light is on. He gets out to look and sees oil dripping out of the motor. He drives to the nearest town and stops at the first gas station. After dropping the car off, the penguin goes for a walk around town. He sees an ice cream shop and, being a penguin in Arizona, decides that something cold would really hit the spot. He gets a big dish of ice cream and sits down to eat. Having no hands he makes a real mess trying to eat with his flippers. After finishing his ice cream, he goes back to the gas station and asks the mechanic if he's found the problem. The mechanic looks up and says it looks like you blew a seal. No no, the penguin replies, it's just ice cream. A guy is in a doctor's office. His doctor is there with him. I have two pieces of bad news, the doctor says. Where are they? Well, the first piece of news is that you have cancer. What's the second piece of news, he asks. Well, the second piece of bad news is that you have Alzheimer's. The man laughs and says, well, at least I don't have cancer. A man had been drinking at a bar all night and pukes down the front of a shirt. Shit I can't go home like this my wife will kill me the bartender sees this and says put a $20 bill in your pocket and when she sees the puke tell her some drunk puked on you and gave you $20 for dry cleaning. So the guy goes home and his wife sees the puke on his shirt and asks what happened, to which he replies the drunk guy puked on me and he gave me $20 to pay for dry cleaning. To which his wife says okay well then why do you have $40 in your hand? Because he also shit in my pants. Patty and Mick worked together in St. John's and both were laid off, so they went to the unemployment office. When asked his occupation, Patty answered, panty stitcher. I sew the elastic onto ladies' cotton panties and thongs. The clerk looked up panty stitcher on his computer and finding it classified as unskilled labor, he gave him $80 a week unemployment pay. Mick was next and when asked his occupation replied, diesel fitter. Since diesel fitter was a skilled job, the clerk gave Mick $160 a week. When Patty found out he was furious, he stormed back into the office to find out why his friend and coworker was collecting double his pay. The clerk explained, panty stitchers are unskilled and diesel fitters are skilled labor. What skill? yelled Patty. I sew the elastic on the panties and the thongs. Mick puts them over his head and says, yep, diesel fitter. A horse walks into a bar. The bartender asks, hey, do you want a beer? The horse thinks a moment, says I think not, and subtly disappears. Now, admittedly, this joke only makes sense if you are familiar with the French Enlightenment philosopher René Descartes, who famously said I think, therefore I am. The horse thought not, and therefore wasn't, but if I explain that first, I'd be putting Descartes before the horse. A long one, but a classic. A businessman is getting ready to go on a long business trip. He knows his wife is always horny, so he decides to get her something to keep her occupied while he was gone, because he didn't much like the idea of her screwing someone else. So he went to a store that sold sex toys and started looking around. He thought about a life-sized sex doll, but that was too close to another man for him. He was browsing through the dildos, looking for something special to please his wife, and started talking to the old man behind the counter. He explained his situation to the old man. Well, I don't really know of anything that will do the trick. We have vibrating dildos, special attachments, and so on, but I don't know of anything that will keep her occupied for weeks, except to said the old man, and then he stopped. Except what? asked the businessman. Nothing, nothing, said the old man. Come on, tell me. I need something, protested the businessman. Well, sir, I don't usually mention this, but there is the voodoo dildo, the old man said. The voodoo dildo, the businessman asked. The old man reached under the counter and pulled out an old wooden box carved with strange symbols. He opened it, and there lay a very ordinary looking dildo. The businessman laughed and said, big fucking deal. It looks like every other dildo in the shop. The old man said, but you haven't seen what it'll do yet. He pointed to a door and said voodoo dildo, the door. The voodoo dildo rose out of its box, darted over to the door, and started screwing the keel. The whole door shook with the vibrations, and a crack developed down the middle. Before the door could split, the old man said, voodoo dildo, box. The voodoo dildo stopped, floated back to the box and lay there, motionless. The businessman said, 
I'll take it. The guy took it home to his wife, told her it was a special dildo, and that to use it, all she had to do was say, Voodoo dildo, my pussy. He left for his trip satisfied things would be fine while he was gone. After he'd been gone a few days, the wife was unbearably horny. She thought of several people who would willingly satisfy her, but then she remembered the voodoo dildo. She lay down, placed the box between her legs, and said voodoo dildo, my pussy. The voodoo dildo shot to her crotch and started pumping. It was great, like nothing she'd ever experienced before. After three orgasms, she decided she'd had enough, and tried to pull it out, but it was stuck in her, still thrusting. She tried and tried to get it out, but nothing worked. Her husband had forgot to tell her how to shut it off. So she decided to go to the hospital to see if they could help. She put her clothes on, got in the car and started to drive to the hospital, quivering with every thrust of the dildo. On the way, another orgasm nearly made her swerve off the road, and she was pulled over by a policeman. He asked for her license, and then asked how much she'd had to drink. Gasping and twitching, she explained that she hadn't been drinking, but that a voodoo dildo was stuck in her pussy, and wouldn't stop screwing her. The officer looked at her for a second, and then said, Yeah, right. Voodoo dildo, my ass. What about you? Tell us your story in comment section, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Right now.